Good morning, people. How are you? So today, <clears throat> our focus is working as a collective, what we can do as a collective on the quantum 5D, 6D quantum crystalline. Not sure if you are connected to any forms of social media, but what I saw on social media was a real uptick in caring and collective prayers for those hurricanes. And we'll talk about that a little bit more, but it made me aware that once again, we have, we have power as a collective to, to bring forth an up-leveling, not only for ourselves, but for other people. So <clears throat> through our work together, you're, you're beginning to register that this reality is a controlled illusion. And uh, of course, we're so ensconced in it, it's easy to forget, right? So the best time to remember that it's a controlled illusion is when it's the hardest. And it's the hardest when something's happening and we get, we get pulled into uh, a situation, uh, an accident, an injury, uh, an argument, um, a conundrum, um, a dilemma, uh, or we just even see something sometimes that just makes us want to cry or shake or feel anger. So the best time to remember that this is a controlled reality is when it is the most challenging. And what I'd love to install with this offering today is that when you feel that difficulty, when you feel that tug, when you feel that dilemma, you go, oh, okay, this is what I'm going to remember. This is what I'm going to remember, that it's a, it's a controlled reality and that I have the power to change it. So we're going to do a little turnaround. We're going to say, we're going to say, thank you, ego, because your ego will bring you all the lessons you really need to break through the illusion that you are of this illusion. So your ego is just going to just deliver, boom. And then you get through that, or you have a really good meditation, or you read something really inspirational and you shift, or you remember to do some of the work that we're about here. And you, and you flow you flow for a while and there's, but there's more. So your ego will just uh, dig around in the, in the pail and uh, offer you something that is next. And the thing that I notice the most is that sometimes the hardest lessons come last because I actually think our unconscious is and subconscious is, it has an intelligence and it goes, okay, I, I, Either I feel like you're ready to deal with this or you better deal with this because you keep coming up with the same thing over and over again. You better deal with this or you're going to be off the path, off the path. And a lot of times we look at paths and we go, the path, but the path goes like this. The real path is the spiral. And that's why we want to engage with that spiral into the more subtler realms. But in addition to this, your job is to observe. So have the discipline to observe, even if it's once a day. <laughs> observe, up level, and then influence. Observe, up level, influence. So we're going to get into that a little bit more today. So <clears throat> your up-leveling is really related to your purpose here and your truth that you have to offer. And your truth could just be kindness and gentleness as you walk about the planet. 
It doesn't have to be, you know, joining the, the UN and changing the world. Your purpose could just be to bring, to bring beauty or love or gentleness or kindness to the field. And, and whether people are directly in your field or you're just bringing into the field, all of this counts big. So your truth will be revealed as you shift to the now. So when you go through one of those challenges and you stop, observe, up level, and then perhaps intend to influence, shifting to the now, you may very well get a little aha. And it may be an aha like, well, I really notice I get triggered about this. Hmm, wonder where that came from. But then it becomes our job to shift to the now one moment and then another and another and have them add up. It's almost as if <clears throat> grains of sand flowing through until it shifts until it shifts the weight, the balance. So to find the now, breathe while you engage your senses. So let's do that right now. Just, just listen. Breathe. Engage your eyes, perhaps even your smell. And somewhere in there, find a moment to silence your mind. Mm -hmm. A thought comes in. You escort it out. And then you smile. And then you be. Every every challenge presented by the control delusion will reveal more of your depth of purpose here once you have observed and detached from its deception it's like we're on a we're on a journey here and i'm certain that if you track back through your life and you see some of those biggest challenges and you shake your head and you're like why did that have to happen to me And then at some point you up level in a moment and you go, oh, reflection into those very challenged moments have given me the most insights about how this cosmological wonder, how this world is put together how an, uh, ancestral lines of energy are put together, how the ego is, is for us and against us, how we're just destined to come here and to learn a number of things so we can be there for other people in a significant way. There's a way in which we make the controlled illusion our teacher rather than our tormentor or a dictator. But it takes it takes a lot of discipline, doesn't it? It takes a lot of discipline. 
So <clears throat> now we have we have this kind of flow into the possibility of breaking through that time space illusion of control. And by doing this, you actually begin to influence the collective. And yeah, it's one grain of, sign, uh, of sand at a time, but we have seen this over and over again. And one could say, well, that's a coincidence. I'll give you a coincidence once, maybe 0.5, but when I see it over and over and over again, I know, I know that I, uh, I'm here to influence the quantum. And I, I take it seriously, especially when I notice not producing the most up, upmost and influencing positive thoughts. So this means for us that we go big. We go big as a field of influence. So part of this is we're trained to believe that this projected illusion is real. So we accept it moment by moment. And so it's easy to forget. So we all have hall passes, you know, for the next 23 hours and uh, 50 minutes. <laughs> we have hall passes because we're just so entrained. But again, I want to say realizing it again and again, that it's an illusion to help you shift it when you in, you inject joy or mindfulness or wisdom or insight or playfulness or humor into the mix to contradict the diminishing effect it has on our innate spirit so so much heaviness you know we just we just we collapse inward and we, and we buy into it more. Um, I was involved in this work um, when I first uh, became a doctor that uh, in, a, in a group setting, you really just uh, found a way through things by laughing. You just would find the humor in it and you would laugh. And sometimes in that you'd be crying too, but you'd laugh and the laugh was the contradiction. Uh, the woman who, uh, one of the women who wrote a book on laughter was a Santa Barbara, and she really had quite the influence on a lot of us. And so um, I really uh, I really got in touch with this just even the other day because I picked up the book, The Dalai Lama's Cat. And the cat is making observations about the Dalai Lama and how the Dalai Lama handles stuff. And he injects joy and mindfulness and wisdom and insights and playfulness and humor in to certain situations and not ever resolving to judging. And he rescues this cat. And the cat gets to his holiness, the cat, I think he's called. <laughs> so, um, Ask yourself, could there be one moment where you inject one of these things, either to yourself or for another? And sometimes it helps to, to read or watch something that's humorous to get yourself to have a giggle. And sometimes you can giggle with and at yourself. But find ways to not only have to work through all of your uh, ego re-stimulations, but also just for the heck of it, inject some joy. Inject some joy into the situation. And since your ego reactions feed the control state, per perhaps it's time to inject thoughts of joy, resilience, hope, peace, and unity into that matrix. So we're going, okay, we're, we're observing it. It's here. I'm not going to be attached to it. And I'm not going to be, a, you know, uh, I'm not going to allow myself to buy into it every chance I get. 
but I am going to today have some positive possibilities filter through my brain. So why don't you just take a moment now and I want you to close your eyes. Just pick up any situation, any anything that's going on. Challenge. Find a challenge. And find an I am. And just doesn't matter which one. Love, peace, freedom, oneness, grace, beauty. Pull out an I am and inject it into this situation. Let's do that together. Let's put this beautifully on the quantum for anyone else who needs this in the moment. And perhaps even visualize how you participated in the illusion. And look at it, go, mm hmm And then you go, and I am love. And then you look at it again. And you go, I am peace. And you look at it again. And you say, I am freedom. And freedom from the matrix. I am freedom. And that, that matrix says you're separate from the one that's in you say, oh, I am one. I am one. And then we expand out into the world and we kind of, you know, feel with our, our body and our hands. Yeah, stuff's going on out there. And we say, all right, everybody, let's all of humanity and whatever animals want to participate, let's do this together. I am love. I am love. And let that just wash across our country and the oceans to other parts of the world. I am love through the illusion. I am love. Smile and nod. That gets it through quickly. Smile and nod. I am love. And then say, I am peace. Come on, everybody. Say it with me. I am am peace and let that peace and love melt division and hatred I am love I am peace and then I am freedom I am Freedom. I am freedom. And 
and then the many of us join hands and say, I am one, and this is our truth. We are truth. We are love. We are peace. We are freedom. We are one. We hold this on the quantum for people to step into today, tomorrow. in and out of time space. Let's step into it. There. Yes, yes, yes. So these I am's are just, it's a really nice sequence, isn't it? It makes sense, right? So dream this sweet sequence onto the quantum. Maybe do it before you go to bed, before you go to sleep, or before you begin a task, you know, washing dishes, raking the yard, folding laundry. What if you were a quantum influencer? Hmm? What if? And then sometimes what'll happen is you do that and then a thought will come through. Well, just watch it because sometimes those thoughts are not even yours. If you see one that isn't yours, you say, aha, I gotcha. I now command thee to work for the good of all. So if there's any external influences to this world that are a little set on keeping us in this mayhem uh, for their own, their own reasons, we're not, we're not influenced by that anymore. And once you do that, then you choose one of those or another one of those empowering thoughts for yourself or the world and blaze it out onto the quantum. You go, no, 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 I am love, I am peace, I'm freedom, I'm one. And this is how it is, this is so, this is so, this is so. So we're going to come to this to this experience. So we had we had uh, we had Helene, the horrific, and then we had Milton, and you know it just ramped up very quickly to a five, and then maybe it went down a little bit to a four, and then back up to a five, and it was it was barreling towards uh, towards western. Florida. And <clears throat> we got to work. People on Facebook got to work. Huge collective got to work. And with hours, by the time I got home, I sent out the email. By the time I got home from work, it was down to category three. And so we're listening to the news and I said, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to do my part to clear it. And I literally just went into the energy of the uh, uh, of the hurricane on the quantum and I could feel it. And originally what I felt was that that hurricane was churning a lot of hate. It was kind of being fed off that energetically. And 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 I think we a lot of that we res we resolved the best we could. But when I was tuning into it I could feel I could feel the the um the enmeshment and the entanglement and and kind of the fury of it and I just let my hands move, let my hands move, let my hands move like this. And then an hour or so later, maybe an hour and a half later, two hours later, I looked and it was down to a two already. So you know what that does? It encourages me to keep doing that. And then as I was sleeping in the middle of the night, because there was, it was aimed right for some <clears throat> property that we have on, on the Eastern coast of Florida, aimed right for it. And it hit, there's category one. And yes, there was some wind driven leaks 
in my property, but I got word today it's fine. So <clears throat> yes, doing this for a somewhat selfish reason, but mostly I couldn't just sing a couple pictures from Helene. I couldn't imagine those people getting hit again with not only storms surge, but with high, 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 high winds and tornadoes. So we have the power to work for our, our sisters and brothers. We have the power to do that. And I, I really feel it's particularly effective when we do it together as, as a group, but also our individual thoughts count, especially if, if we empower ourselves as such. I went, I can go sit down right now and I can influence that hurricane's speed. I just believe it. And if it happens, great. It's just an experiment. But believe in yourself, believe in your power. And the more you believe in it and utilize it for the good of all, and the, and the more results you get, the more you will feel uh, you'll, you'll step into your your innate power. So that makes us, when we're doing this, we start to take on the job as, as being a quantum influencer. Um, you know, like I said, it's going to keep projecting into your field. But as a quantum influencer, know that the, the quantum crystalline is illuminating, is illuminating the specter of illusion from within. So it's already here. You know, we close our eyes we close our eyes. And especially when we have our eight, we really get that sense and feeling. And as soon as we move into the now, especially with the collective eight, it, it, it gets to bleed through. It gets to bleed through and thin. So you are bringing through the quantum crystalline with every act of observation and choice to spiral clockwise upwards in consciousness for yourself, but it's also for the good of all. So if you're in a situation and you really go, this continues to be hard, you just stop and take your consciousness clockwise in an upward and expanding spiral, clockwise. And every one of your illuminations bring forth revelations of truth, not only for you, but it edges it out onto the planet. And I'm going to tell you, I, I've seen evidence of it. Um, certainly there's evidence of the, of the contrast, but I've seen evidence that things are really beginning to bleed through with, with not only our work, but many, many other beautiful people. So how to influence the quantum crystalline? Whenever you can engage with higher intellect. So you stop your mind for a moment. You have a question, you ask it, but engage, say, I really need some help here. Can you help me? Can you protect me? Can you protect the situation? Can you offer guidance here? And then it's up to you to channel the guidance. You can't just say, hey, send me a helicopter to save me and then go off and do your business and not pay attention. When the helicopter gets sent, engage with it. Channel your guidance, not only for you, but maybe for somebody else. As you move along, activate your powers. Are you a healer? Are you a seer? Are you a knower? Are you a comforter? Are you a dreamer? Many, many different types of powers. Are you an energy mover? Are you a weather influencer? Powers are innate to us based on some of the experiences that we've had even before we got here. So use them for the good of all, and then be kind. And I always, I always go back to this, this vision. You know, 
perhaps it's a Friday and everybody's going to Whole Foods or one of Trader Joe's or one of those kind of local stores take out stuff for the weekend and then they're in a hurry and it's going to be a holiday weekend. What if half the people or a tenth of the people came in there with the intention, I'm going to be kind here. I'm going to be kind. And just move about the store. I'm going to be love. I'm going to hold I am peace here and move about the store. It affects everyone. Sometimes it's just looking at someone with that light in your eyes, that kindness in your eyes, and just smiling like that. Sometimes it's bending over and picking up something for someone. We're getting out of the way. Graciousness. We can do it. Even if we're like this, it can happen. And what's interesting is I definitely had, uh, this is a little personal here, I had some challenges for the week. And um, one of them, a couple of them had to do with my workplace. And so one had to do a very, very heavy piece of equipment that just me and another person were trying to work to get out of the office and another very heavy piece of equipment and <clears throat> didn't have the right equipment to get it in the door, et cetera. But I did this work with all of us last Monday and just spun just spun on the quantum, you know, ease and grace. I did it with you. Why not? And what was really interesting is that guy showed up and helped me and that guy delivered on time. And I wasn't, I was in a little bit of a conundrum about what was next. And I look out and there's someone pull up in a truck right there and I could go talk to him. And he came up with so many solutions. And one by one, in a very logical, orderly, orderly way, all the solutions came. And then there was the final plug-in. The equipment worked. And I had to, I had to, I had to look up and say thank you. And I could look in and say thank you. I could look down, to, you know, wherever. But I I did say thank you. I noted it and realized that I set it in motion and it responded. And so we can go play the hard way <laughs> on the control matrix, or we can, we can play the, in the light way, the enlightened way on the QC. It's our choice. It's our choice. So once you're, once you've got that going, so then you're, then you activate your spiritual insights and you would tune to truth. Sometimes you just go, I don't know what to do. And you go, but I'm going to open this book. There it is. Literally. I mean, I opened this book that someone told me to read and there, there was something that the Dalai Lama's cat said. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so perfect. Work to be clear on your mission here. Feel it in here. Feel it in your soul. Attune to it with your mind. Write about it. Ask the question before you go to sleep. How can I best? How can I best manifest what I'm here to do? And then observe the now. Project I am. Engage with what's being presented to you with curiosity and intuitive inquiry. Now, I really wonder why that just happened. Hmm. Shift mind and soul. Mind, soul to love, love, love. And then when things get pretty challenging, love, 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 love. Love to the seventh. So go over this again. Let's go over this again. Activate spiritual insight. Aha. Attuned to the truth. So to resolve an issue this week, someone said to me, I have to speak my truth or this is my truth. And I listened. And by doing so, I resolved an issue for myself. Be clear on your mission. If you're not clear today, 
be clear tomorrow because you've asked. Observe the now at least once a day. Choose and project, I am. And then engage with curiosity in that intuitive inquiry because it makes things lighter. You don't get so stuck in your head of this is how it has to be. You're like, I wonder how we can solve this problem. Rather than going, oh my God, oh my God, right? I wonder. And that was, um, a teacher taught me that. She said, if you can't find something, there's, there's an issue, just say, I wonder. Because what that does is it opens up a different, it opens up the intuitive brain. When you say, I wonder, it's in the code. And then of course, always we're gonna say this over and over again, shift to love, love, love. It's just such a beautiful thing. Okay, so we're gonna do this again. We're gonna do this again, and we're gonna do it a little bit more energetically. We're gonna choose a path of illusion. And I'm really feeling kind of what's going on in our country <clears throat> with, you know, elections and, you know, information being put out there. And, you know, there's kind of a knot there. And everybody has the right to vote here and to hopefully be guided to choose the right being for what needs to happen, not only for us, but in the world and, and over a period of time, you know, four years. So let's, I'm, I'm kind of reading things and I'm really feeling that. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and connect with the collective, all beings. And I would say in this situation, most people have made up their minds and that's okay. And then feel the entanglements just imagine that you can feel and see. Maybe there's the entanglements of money. Maybe there's the entanglements of the distortion of the truth. Maybe there's the entanglements of, of ego-driven expression. And just, just pull it apart lightly so that more of the, the quantum crystalline of I am love, I am peace, I am freedom, and I am one can bleed through. And if there are things, say, even coming from outside of our country that are influential in a harmful way, Protection all around, all around this sacred, sacred right of ours to vote, to choose. And we just also see the dark threads of violence and we pull those out. The dark threads of hatred and ill thoughts. We pull those out of the entanglement. And then again, we call in more. I am love. I am peace. I am freedom. I am one. We fill in the space. Whenever you release negativity, you've got to fill it with something beautiful. 
and true and sacred. And I even see the possibility of the opalescent blue, which is the blue pearl, which is this very beautiful sacred color that comes in when there's a when there's a tick of the opening in the actual physical space manifesting. And so we call that in. Call that in. And and even to the minds and hearts of all leaders throughout our country and mayors and governors and senators and Congress people, just, just why not? Just a little break here in the entanglement. So yes, yeah, so now there's more light there, more light. There we go, okay. And then as you pull up the entanglements, they begin to organize into a beautiful, beautiful dandelion. And let them organize in a symmetrical and beautiful way so that what gets emanated from these threads that were entangled now is the I am's and the possibility and up leveling and deepening of purpose and will and grace and beauty. And then from the center, unconditional love, that possibility of unconditional love radiating out from the center radiating out. Why not? Why not? And then flow our love, love, love. Dissipating shreds of ego entanglement, the bits and bobs. Beautiful. And then we hold that vision in the vision of true democracy. Tempered. <laughs> Tempered with love and peace. True freedom. in unity, the United States. A pulse of unity. And then let's gently spin that field clockwise. Shift to the possibility of quantum crystal. Have that just be there. Breathe and anchor that possibility of the quantum crystal and breathing through into the collective. And choose your I am as your ongoing level of participation. And pulse that. Onto the QC and into the collective.
So that leaves us then to revisit that maybe once or twice. Revisit that configuration and especially when you read news that put you into a little bit of a mental tizzy, just say, and. That's all you have to say, and. And then you become magical quantum influencers. And it's, it's a, it begins as a tiny job and it gets, it gets more and more profound. And then you watch, observe for the next moment for you to break through and then walk through the world as it. It's a lot. It's so much to ask. It's so much to ask, but we're going to, we keep reminding ourselves to do it. Okay, thank you for joining us today. Continue to up level. We all have to do it. We all have to do our part. And it's a joyful experience. Yes, it takes discipline, but it's a joyful experience when you have those little breakthroughs. And sometimes you get a giggle out of it. Love when you get the giggle. Okay. Beautiful beings, love, love, love. Namaste.